Redgrove's wife. Pity Redgrove's wife? I think not. Praise Redgrove's wife? Why not? Kiss and snog Redgrove's wife? I dare not. Bejewel Redgrove's wife with topaz and coral? I will not. Publish Redgrove's wife? I shall not. But I shall. Forget Redgrove's wife? No, I have not. Question Redgrove's wife? Not yet, not yet. Confuse Redgrove's wife? Huh, I need not. Fear Redgrove's wife? Oh, fear not. Dream of Redgrove's wife? Yes, night after night. Translate Redgrove's wife? Why not? She's not made of tin. Amaze Redgrove's wife? Leave that to Redgrove. Well, of course, one of the ways um, I can still touch Peter is through his own poems. And I'd like to read one of his now. Um, it was one written shortly before we met, a couple of years before we met. And it, um, it marks his move to Cornwall, which was to become really important, obviously, in our lives. Um, but at that time, he was living in Leeds, um, where he was Gregory Fellow in poetry there, and he was going to move down to Falmouth to um, take up a position at the art college there. And he made several visits down there. And he came back, but if you've been to Cornwall, you can come back with these little boxes of mineral specimens, you know, tiny little sort of crumbs of stone with all the particular kinds of stone you can find in Cornwall. And uh, they're called a case of samples. And this poem is called Minerals of Cornwall, Stones of Cornwall, a case of samples. Splinters of information, stones of information, drab stones in a drab box, specimens of a distant place, granite, galena, talc, lava, kaolin, quartz, landscape in a box under the dull sky of Leeds. One morning was awake in Cornwall by the estuary in the tangy pearl light, tangible tin light, and the stones were awake. These ounce chips had begun to think in the place they came out of. Tissues of the earth in their proper place, quartz tinged with the rose, the deep, quick scrap of tissue of the slow heart of the earth, throbbing the light I look at it with. It pumps slowly, most slowly, the deep organ of the earth. And Galena too, snow silvery, its chipped sample shines like the sun on peaks. It plays and thinks with the mineral light. It sends back its good conclusions. It is exposed. It sends back the light silked and silvered and talc and kaolin. Why, they are purged, laundered, as I see the white sand of some seamless beaches here is laundered and purged like the whole world's mud quite cleansed to its very crystal. Talc, a white mat. Kaolin, the white wife of Cornwall, glistening with inclusions, clearly its conclusions considered and laid down the stone look of its thoughts and opinions of flowers and turf riding and seeding above it in the wind, thoughts gathered for millennia as they blossomed in millions above its then kaolin station within the moor, the place of foaming white streams and smoking blanched mountains. Asbestos had found this bright morning its linear plan of fibres, its simple style lay there, declaring like the others. Granite, the great rock, the rock of rocks at home now, flecked green, heavily contented in its box, riding with me high above its general body, the great massif, while its fellows, the hills of it rise high around us. Nor was lava silent, now it remembered, by glistening in this light, boiling, and was swart with great content. Having seen God walking over the burning mile, having seen a someone thrusting his finger into the mountainside to make it boil, here is the issue of this divine intrusion. 
I am the issue of this divine intrusion. My heart beats deep and fast. My teeth glisten over the swiftness of my breath. My thoughts hurry like lightning. My voice is a squeak buried among the rending of mountains. I am a mist passing through the crevices of these great seniors, enclosed by me in a box, now free of the light, conversing of all the issue this homecoming has awakened in the stone mind. The minds, like frozen bolts of black lightning deep in the land, saying, and the edge of their imaginings cuts across my mind. We are where we were taken from, and so we show ourselves ringing with changes and calls of fellowship that call to us ton to ounce across the Cornish valleys. The valleys throng with ghosts of stone so I may scarcely pass. Their loving might crush. They cry out at their clumsiness, move away, death-dealing hardnesses in love. The house is a sound, the house is full of a sound of running water, the night is a black honey, crystals wink at the brim, a clock blows through a wind blows through the clock, the black mud outside lies curled up in haunches like a sleeping cat. And um, I was very pleased that Anne Stevenson used that line, A Wind Blows Through the Clock, in a lovely poem she wrote called um, Variations on a Line by Peter Redgrave. 